Hello everyone! Today we'll be decorating this craft folder traveler's notebook insert. We'll be using BV11, RV63, B06, and BG13 Copics to color it in. And we also have a Pigma Micron 08 and a white jelly roll gel pen. I decided to sketch some jellyfish for the craft folder because I was thinking you know, the craft folder is going to stay even as the other inserts move in and out. So I wanted it to be something that I would continue to like for, you know, months and months, even years to come, depending on how long I'm using this. So I decided to land on jellyfish because they're my favorite animal and I didn't think that I would, you know, get sick and tired of them, which I might have if I chose like some, you know, a character from something that I like currently. For the bulk of this, I'm using that N8 and you know flicking out the color as I'm working to kind of give a little bit of a, a gradient effect as it's going. But yeah, it's the N8 is almost a black, so you can use it to ink those kind of wider areas like that. You'll probably have noticed at the beginning too that I had a little watercolor palette of metallic watercolors. Those are the Kuretake Gonzai Tombi Starry colors. I'm only going to be using one of those today, and that's going to be the white gold. Now unfortunately I do find that those watercolors get pretty patchy if you use them in wider areas, so I always just use them for smaller details, like today I'm going to be using them on the bubbles around the jellyfish. But other than that, I, I like the quality, I think they're very good, um, I've, just <laughs> I've just ruined a, a few drawings trying to overlay a Copic marker with those watercolors on a larger background, so I really don't recommend that. You know, between this project and the previous Howl's Moving Castle illustration, I'm starting to really gain an appreciation for different mid-tone papers. I can't even remember the last time I tried drawing on craft paper or that really unique gray tone that that other notebook had. So I think I might, you know, try and pick some of this up and experiment with it. I've seen people do some really cool and interesting things with it and I, mean, I just didn't think I would enjoy it, but after this I, I definitely think it's worth a shot. Oh, and just in case you're wondering, that little Jane Davenport watercolor tin, that's what I've been using in my other videos. So that's, a, that's it closed. I really enjoyed the cute colors that they came in. They came in that nice turquoise there and uh, a gold one. I did have the gold one and I, I still do, but it's pretty, uh, it's seen better days. It's pretty banged up now. I do think it's a little unfortunate. It's hard to get your hands on any watercolor tin that's you know aesthetically appealing in any way. I feel like a lot of them are just, you know, black, white, standard blue. So I, I really appreciate that they had a little bit of color and pizzazz to them. I wish more did. Now I've got to tell you, I started Jeff Vandermeer's book Annihilation and subsequently finished it in a single sitting. Boy, it went way too fast. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Um, one of my friends uh, lent it to me in a pile of books and said that she thought I would really like it. Uh, to which I was like, oh, um, wasn't there a movie that came out about this a few years ago? And I was like, I thought it was a horror film. <laughs> and um, which, which was interesting to me because while I like horror, um, I didn't think her description of the book or the, the description on the back really matched a horror film. So she said, yeah, it's a bit different from the book. And I can tell you now uh, from having read the entire book that I am very curious and feel like I need to watch that movie. <laughs> it just doesn't seem like it can be much like the book at all. So I'm kind of wondering what creative liberties they took with it, if it's any good. I haven't heard anyone who's seen it, and I didn't hear anything after the movie came out, but it looks like the reviews are surprisingly pretty good. So we'll have to see about that. Now, as I've implied, this book was a really quick read. 
I mean, I, th I felt like I was only reading it for 20 minutes um, before it was done. And it was pleasant. I just, you know, read it in bed and one of my cats was cuddling me the entire time. So that was nice. But I'm a little, I'm a little sad that it's part one of a trilogy, especially with where it ended out. I kind of wish it was just a standalone piece. And now I really feel like I have to read the other two. And I still have more of the book pile, which is not the sequels to this. So that's fun. So later I'll go back with that 08 micron and clean up some of the dark lines on the jellyfish but for now I'm, I'm pretty happy with them so I'll take that 06 Copic I believe that's peacock blue and that will be the background now as for what I'm up to besides just breeding annihilation it's you know it's getting warmer it's about that time of the year to think about what to do about the yard and outdoor projects and my yard is a veritable disaster area. <laughs> so I'm trying to get a battle plan together of whether I want to outsource that um, and pay someone else to help revitalize things. There's just, you know, a lot of brown patches. Things could really, um, things could be better. Or whether I want to just budget and plan to do treatments myself. Because I have the time, honestly, and if it's just a matter of buying materials and being able to use it yourself, and it has nothing to do with expertise or knowledge, then it just makes sense for me to do it and save on the cost, allocate that for other house projects. But I don't know, I'll have to do some research. And besides that, I already know like I need to paint my front and back porch and work on some other little projects around the house this summer. I'm just looking forward to getting out of the house more. Definitely do some more hiking. I feel like I also have to mention, <laughs> ever since things have been kind of thawing out, I've been having some visitors in my backyard, by which I mean stray cats. And it seems like every day in my office, there's a large glass window, glass door, and they just, you know, I just see them walking right up to it. And the crazy thing is, it's hardly ever the same cat. And there's been so many, I've never seen so many stray cats. Don't know what to do with them. <laughs> but I'm just glad, like, my cats haven't been distressed by it or anything. But I will say, during one meeting, I was looking out at the, at the glass doors and I noticed that there was something on my back patio again and I was like oh my goodness another cat wow this one's different too I can't believe how many there are and and then I thought wow that's a pretty fat cat <laughs> also weirdly enough it seems kind of spiky and then I realized it was not a cat at all <laughs> it was a crown dog I I've never seen one that close before I've never seen one around my home or any of my previous homes so uh it's becoming a zoo around here <laughs> and I, I don't know what to do about it So now that I'm done adding colors to the bubbles in the background and with that 06 Peacock, I'm going in with the white Jelly Roll gel pen and adding in those tentacles. I think it turned out really well this time. Uh, sometimes there's not enough contrast between the background and the white for it to show up very well. But with that craft paper and the overlaying of some darker Copic colors like that Peacock, I think it really showed up well and I really enjoyed it. So 
So now with those tentacles done, I'm grabbing that um, white gold. It, the paints are in the wrong order in the pan. What I am using is the white gold, which is the lightest shade. It's not the uh, champagne gold that you're seeing there. And I'm overlaying it on top of the colors of the bubbles. I do kind of wish that I had done this before I had done the tentacles because uh, they were a little difficult to paint around. But other than that, I really like the effect and how it turned out. And again, sometimes they're patchy on larger areas, but they, they looked very good on uh, the smaller bubbles. It seemed pretty even by the end of it. Now I'm also going to use that metallic watercolor to add some flex to the background. I also go back in with the jelly roll and do that as well for some little dots in the background. I, um, I think it's a little bit better if you actually load up your brush with the paint and fleck it to get that kind of um, organic look to it, especially since this is mimicking kind of, if you look at any ocean shot you always have those particles in the background. But the, the problem with flecking off your you know, watercolor brushes that you will inevitably get it on pe uh, pieces of the painting that you don't want it. And normally that's really no big deal. You just take a wettened paper towel and um, pick up where you got pigment that you didn't want it. But again, since I'm not using watercolor paper, I wasn't really sure how it would react to that. So I figured it'd just be best to avoid that. Now adding lines around the finished artwork is probably one of my favorite parts. It just takes it and it really elevates it and makes it seem so much cleaner and better. And I love how the white lets it stick apart from the uh, craft paper background. With that border done, and we're about done with this piece. I really like how it turned out, and I'm gonna be enjoying using it as a craft folder in my traveler's notebooks. So thank you guys for joining me today. I hope your creative projects went well. I'll see you next time. Bye.